for learning. So I, for a very long time, have had anecdotal experience that reflection supports learning. I'm using the word anecdotal very carefully because many academics will challenge me and they do so regularly about well, where's the evidence that reflection works. Um, and that was a lovely question and a challenge because I've then worked with a colleague um, and a team of colleagues to look at and for that evidence. And what we've found is that indeed there is an enormous body of anecdotal evidence by practitioners, not just at, across our university, across Australia, across the world, that they use evidence and it works, that students are learning from it. Um, what we need now though is some more robust um, evidence of how it links to learning outcomes. So I guess I'm relying on my professional judgement to make that call that I believe it works. I'm using my anecdotal evidence of what I have seen in my classroom because I teach this in the postgraduate program um, and in our foundations program. Um, and some authors talk about felt knowing, you know, your, and that links to your professional judgement, you know, I know from all this experience that it works. So why? Why use it? It's to support student learning. And there are many ways it supports student learning because by supporting them to engage with reflective practice, you are encouraging them to engage with higher order thinking skills. So they, you know, that critical thinking and critique of their own learning and their experiences. Um, and these all link to university graduate attributes and the like for lifelong learners and, and people capable of professional judgement. The main reason why I've embedded reflective practice in my units is because I think it's the foundational skill for good professional practice, um, both in situ and going forward as a, as a professional person. Uh, it's particularly important in situations which are ambiguous and uncertain. Um, if I think about the colleagues I've worked with in my professional life, some have jobs which are relatively more repetitive and well defined and it's a little less critical there. Others are working in areas which are very complex and, evol and evolving or maybe they include things like political issues which are not very well disciplined and not disciplinable arguably um, to, to a great extent, to some extent they are. And so depending on the problem space with, or kinds of problem space with which you're working, you may need to pay a lot of attention to that kind of reflective dimension of your practice or somewhat less. But if you want to actually work for change in socio-ecological uh, systems, which is where I personally am committed and where my teaching is focused, you really are working with situations where there's fairly high levels of uncertainty and high levels of complexity. And you've got at least aspects of the problem domain that are not disciplinable in, an, in a typical way. And in that, those kinds of contexts, the ability to actually notice what's going on in those situations and to respond sensitively and acutely is incredibly important. In the context of PACE activities in particular, where most students will be using this, it's a very powerful way of learning. And it's powerful because it does things like make connections. It helps you make connections between things like what you're learning at university, the kinds of theories that you're learning, the kinds of skills that you're learning, and what you're doing in that workplace, or perhaps in other places as well. You can make connections between what you're doing now and your future. So starting to think about your future career might be something that you might do here. It's also about making sense making sense about what's happening to you right now. So for instance, many students come across the idea that their supervisor has said to them, well, this report isn't what I wanted. And sometimes for students, that's the first time they've ever been told that something they've done is completely wrong. So making sense of that can be a powerful thing that you can do with reflection. So you can start to think about things like, is it just this supervisor? Are they silly? Is it me? Am I, am I a bad person? Is what I'm trying to do, what I thought I would do for my future, now we're not going to be there because I've done a report badly? Or is it just that I need to reframe this report in some particular other way? It might also be about whether you're in the right career. So is this the right place for me to be? Have I been planning all this time to be a something or other and then find I don't actually want to be that? 
or is it a way of working out where you want to fit within a particular profession? Um, I used to teach in museum studies, for instance, and most of my students would come along and say, oh, I only want to work at the Australian Museum. Well, there's not many places in the Australian Museum, or certainly not enough for all museum studies students. So the question is, where else could they go? Many students ended up doing their placement in small organisations. But at the end of that, they often came back to me and said, you know, when I thought this through, when I've reflected about this, I realise that this is the place where it's all happening. This is where I meet community. This is where I can make a difference. So in fact, the charting of the course into a smaller organisation of their future is now what they plan to do. Which brings you to the third thing that you might think about or why reflect in terms of making plans. Making plans between, for the future. So if your report is no good in your work placement, what do I do now? How do I go forward from this might be something that you might reflect about. Where do I go in my future? Does this mean I can't go forward in my future? Do I need to think about something else? In all of these ways, this is a lifelong skill. If we start doing this in a purposeful way now, rather than just the random thoughts in the shower, then suddenly we've got some way of making sense into the future, making plans into the future, and making connections between a whole range of things into the future. Well, look, I've been using reflection for a long time, even myself, when I did my doctorate, or probably even my MBA. I did some form of formal or informal reflection on what has happened. So I've had very personal and very positive experience. So no wonder when I was setting up my own courses here at Macquarie University, early on I decided to make reflection part of my course and courses. So the learning reflection in my courses is always optional. Students don't necessarily have to do the reflection if they don't wish to do so. However, m the vast majority of students really do uh, participate in the exercise. We don't ultimately know why, but from feedback from the students and reading between the lines, it seems students find the approach to be very fresh. It's somehow detached from the everything is assessed and over assessed. It's like a free open area and they enjoy that freedom and they, they seem to benefit from, from the exercise and that's why they really put it in on a voluntarily on a voluntary basis. In a participation context um, we have the perfect opportunity for students to be out there and engage in experiential learning. Um, that's what participation is about, you know, living the experience and they're bringing their formal theoretical learning from university into the participation context wherever that may be and as we know the possibilities there are incredibly diverse, broad and therefore exciting. Um, so what we're talking about then is this concept of praxis where students are able to bring together and we support them to do that their theoretical learning with their practical experience and, and to me that's really important.